Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today I would like to talk about Ernest Haeckel. You might have heard about ontogeny repeats phylogeny, or the biogenetic law, or the law of recapitulation. When I was in medical school, I was taught by my embryology professor that this law is true. Today I would like to ask you to join me in exploring this great personality in evolutionary science, Ernest Haeckel. Ernest Haeckel was a German philosopher, scientist, physician, artist, zoologist. He studied medicine and after reading Origin of Species by Charles Darwin, he became a Darwinian bulldog in continental Europe. He dedicated his life to finding evidences for Darwinian evolutionary theory. He found so many organisms and he gave them scientific names. He was a great artist, so he drew many beautiful pictures uh, of these uh, sponges. And uh, So Haeckel stopped his medical profession and went to University of Jena to do a doctorate in zoology and then he became a professor of comparative anatomy in the same university where he spent some 47 years. He was uh, a traveler, he traveled around the world, especially he went to Canary Islands in um, 1867 and he met Charles Darwin and uh, Thomas Huxley, Charles Lyle and he was deeply influenced by them. Now the theory of evolution was on the table and Ernest Haeckel had to find the evidence, the concrete evidence to support his theory. As you know the most fascinating question and the most unanswered question in the field of science is about the origins. How can you explain the origin of life from non-living non things? And Ernest Haeckel found a very good explanation for that. He, in fact, he brought the imaginary monera. I mean, to fill that gap between non-living things and uh, living organisms, he invented a series of minute protoplasmic organisms, which he called monera. Ernest Haeckel drew this diagram out of his imagination. As you can see, here how well he drew the life cycle of monera, the microorganisms he drew out of his own imagination and they have never been found even to this day. Ernest Haeckel also proposed the existence of a speechless ape man whom he described as a missing link between apes and human beings. In fact he postulated that this ape man would be discovered in a Dutch East Indian islands, now Indonesia. Many of his students went to Indonesia and uh, actually some of them found human remains, especially Eugene Dubai. He discovered some skeletal remains and he called it Pithecanthropus. But what happened? They were found to be just skeletal remains of some human beings. So these lies, my friend, they never s stopped. This is Pithecanthropus salalus, Ernest Haeckel drew. He drew them in minute detail and uh, in fact these were published in textbooks and people really thought they, they were real. And now coming to the most important fraud he ever done, which has been influencing Darwinian theories even to this day is ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. He said that a human embryo in its embryological development it just repeats every evolutionary stage it went through in its past. 
ontogeny repeats phylogeny that is ontogeny the developmental forms then phylogeny the embryological forms so ontogeny every time a human embryo develops it goes through all those stages the fish stage and then the amphibian stage then the reptilian stage and the mammalian stage so what had he had to do to prove that he took some drawings drawings of a dog embryo and the drawings of a human embryo and he made adjustments to those drawings to show them as similar to each other this is the diagram Ernest Haeckel drew to prove his ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. You can see the dog embryo and the human embryo. Both of them look the same. But you know the actual diagram? This is the actual diagram. The dog embryo and the human embryo. They look so different but Ernest Haeckel made them look similar. To prove that these embryos look similar and to make his case for ontogeny. Those drawings drawn by Ernest Haeckel were taken as a living witness to the Darwinian theory. But zoologists in his own time found the fraud. They exposed the fraud completely. Wilhelm Sir, a contemporary zoologist, he actually took those drawings and explained the fraud done by Ernest Haeckel. Haeckel added 3.5 mm to the head of the dog embryo and he removed 2.5 millimeters from the head of human embryo and to make them to look similar to each other. But my friend, evolutionists are printing the same lying diagrams in textbooks even to this day because they don't find any evidence in any other thing. Ernest Haeckel, the bulldog of Darwinism in continental Europe, he created fraud after fraud after fraud after fraud to prove evidences for evolution. He created the hypothetical monera, the protamoeba primitiva, the organisms that never existed to prove his theory that living organisms could evolve from non-living things. He created that hypothetical ape-man, Pithecanthropus alalus, that never existed to make a connection between apes and human beings. He created the biogenetic law, the law that has never been. The ontogeny repeats phylogeny. That's a big lie. Even to this day, evolutionists are teaching that lie to children using the same fraudulent diagrams in textbooks, my friend. This lie, Darwinism, has to be stopped in our public schools and private schools so that students can find the truth. Thank you.